South Carolina in what appears to be the second such drill. Special forces have been deployed domestically alongside local sheriffs to train for midnight raids in Richland County. The footage you're seeing right now is the third special forces group out of Fort Bragg conducting a nighttime raid during an exercise. This is the special forces unit that cannot be replicated at Fort Bragg. Coordinating with the special forces will be the county's special response team or SWAT to provide quote simulated scenarios for the military. What's more chilling than coordinated domestic raid training is that official reports state that live ordnance and gunfire will be employed. Now you can add this drill to the long list of domestic training exercises that have occurred so far this year. FEMA camp roundup drills in Florida, martial law training in California, Marines prepping for riot control in Virginia, and of course the mother of all drills, Jade Helm. This is another glaring example of the militarization of local police nationwide who have received nearly half a billion dollars in military equipment from the Department of Defense. So this begs the question, who is training who? When local sheriffs receive military equipment and then the special forces train alongside SWAT, the lines are blurred. The color of authority is transferred to the local police as they become a militarized force. Local law enforcement can't violate posse comitatus, but they can use the same equipment and tactics as the military, making them one and the same. Just a different jurisdiction, thus skirting the law and violating the Constitution. Military Occupational Specialty, Internment Resettlement Specialist. The Army's Internment Resettlement Specialist plays an integral role in providing a uniform system of handling prisoners and detainees. First and always, these MPs are combat support soldiers, trained to fight. Then as Internment Resettlement Specialists, trained to control and supervise detainees, to ensure humane treatment, and to assist them in returning to a productive life. For this job, you must qualify for a an operational readiness exercise conducted at the Naval Weapons Station in Yorktown, Virginia. Marines training for riot control. That's right. Marines training for riot control. Per the usual, the exercise was given the cover story of overseas preparation. Sergeant Andrew S. Wilbur, a non-lethal weapons instructor, said of a similar exercise, quote, consider they are hypothetically operating within an embassy. However, as we've been following for weeks, public concerns are running high amidst the recent Fort Lauderdale FEMA camp roundup drills and Ontario, California martial law training. Participants in this latest training exercise were the Bravo Fleet Anti-Terrorism Security Team Company. Oddly, the high production footage you're seeing right now is directly from the Department of Defense. It is a professional news package intended for the public to see. So this exercise actually has a twofold effect. First, the Marines are training for riot and crowd control on American soil where Tea Partiers and Constitutionalists are constantly demonized by politicians and the media. In the event of civil unrest, these same Marines could deploy this training upon Americans. Second, the media production aspect of this is chilling because it shows they're doing this in full public view. They want this to be seen. Why? Because they want the public to accept Marines, not police, conducting riot control during the coming martial law and societal breakdown. While training is a common part of military life, these tactics are suspect in context of our other reports. Men in Kevlar vests and helmets, camouflage, carrying automatic rifles, moving in tactical armored vehicles. These aren't American troops on the battlefield, but police in Ferguson. One observer says he thought he saw police in an MRAP. An MRAP is a mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicle. It's built to withstand armor-piercing bombs. Uh, this is not something that we need in American communities. But Kara Dansky of the ACLU says more than 500 MRAPs have made their way from Afghanistan and Iraq to local police forces in America just over the past couple of years. It's part of what the ACLU, in a recent report, called the excessive militarization of American policing. Indications of that are everywhere in Ferguson. Police in these towns are getting much of this combat equipment, free of charge, from the Pentagon. 
the Defense Department says just in 2013, nearly $450 million worth of military equipment was given to law enforcement. A defense official says Ferguson police only got a couple of Humvees and a trailer. But police departments throughout Missouri, which are assisting in Ferguson, got 20 MRAPs and hundreds of M16 rifles in recent years. Critics say often when they get these weapons, policemen's attitudes change. Bring it! Increasingly, the police are trained to view the people in the communities that they're supposed to be protecting and serving as enemies. Dangers like police overreacting when conducting minor operations like serving search warrants. They will drive up in an armored personnel carrier, raid a person's home, holding assault rifles, holding people at gunpoint, yelling at everyone to get on the floor. This is an extremely traumatic experience, and we've seen over and over again situations like this where people are traumatized. The Defense Department supports this trend overall. While it would take you or me four to six weeks and unending hassle and documentation to secure a passport, as reported by the Washington Post, your local police force need only fill out a one-page form for an armored personnel carrier.